On this day, the 28th of October, 1922, the fascists' march on Rome reaches Rome. This was supposed to be a coup d'etat, and it resulted in Mussolini being asked on the 29th to form a government as the Prime Minister. He was asked by the King, who hoped that this would stop the, the chaotic uh, situation in Italy at the time. So in late October, fascist party leaders had planned an insurrection. So when they entered Rome, the Prime Minister at the time wanted to declare a st state, state of siege, but the King wouldn't have it. So instead, he got rid of that Prime Minister, and he made Mussolini the Prime Minister, which must have been great for him because he only had a tiny party in Parliament. So after the war, there was a period of disruption chaos, where you had communists and socialists fighting each other in the streets. Mussolini, who had been a socialist, had split from them and become a nationalist during the First World War, and afterwards established uh, the Italian Fascist Party. In 1919, Mussolini tried to enter Parliament, but he lost. So, the black shirts, uh, Mussolini's men, began to attack socialist politicians and militants. They were used to break a general strike, which started at the Alfa Romeo factory in Milan, and after the assassination of a right-wing guy in Bologna, the black shirts were active in suppressing socialists. 1921, the fascists joined with the liberals and the conservatives where they were able to win 35 seats and Mussolini was elected to parliament. But after that he withdrew his support from the government and he turned to the socialists. He's how he was obviously trying to gain power, which is exactly what he said he wanted to do. So, in October of 1922, Mussolini, talking to 60,000 militants at a fascist rally in Naples, said, our program is simple. We want to rule Italy. So Mussolini then decides that they're going to march on Rome. He didn't participate in the march, though he did some photo ops for it, and he looked quite fierce in those photographs. And then, after this, the fascists started marching to Rome, where Mussolini decided to take the train. Okay, so the Prime Minister at the time was uh, Luigi Facta. Facta, that's a funny name. And so Mussolini was d demanding his resignation, but the Prime Minister didn't believe that Mussolini would actually get into power. He thought maybe he wants, wants to be a minister. Then the fascists were marching on Rome on this day, the 28th, and the Prime Minister wanted the King to declare a state of siege. King Victor Emmanuel refused, <coughs> and instead he fired the Prime Minister and appointed Mussolini. The reason he appointed him, from what I can tell, is he thought that Mussolini had great charisma and people would follow him and he had many of these fascists around him who could be used to
to suppress the socialists and to restore order, which for the first couple of years of his rule, that's exactly what he did. Up to this point, Italy had been ruled by various rickety governments, prime ministers lasting a few months to maybe a year or two, then falling or being overthrown or being voted out, replaced by another rickety administration, which inevitably failed. And after this, there was a 20-year period in which Mussolini was in charge. I'm pretty sure no one at the time thought that Mussolini would stay that long. Most people were c confident that he'd be gone in a few months, maybe a year or two, and that things would continue as normal. And at first, he was just the Prime Minister. He only announced that he was Il Duce in 1925. And that seems to be a little bit odd, calling himself the leader when he's only King's first minister. But that's what he did. And that's one of the reasons why Victor Emmanuel abdicated after the war, trying to save his throne for his son, which didn't work. So the march had 30,000 men, but it was feared that civil war could break out because some of the fascists already taken control within the Po Valley and many people didn't thought that fascism was less of a threat than the socialists or the communists. So they made a deal with the devil and for a while it worked. It wasn't really until old Adolf came along that Mussolini lost it and went too far. Up until then he had been quite sensible. He had resisted the urge to go too far. He had invaded Abyssinia, but he could do that. Whereas invading Greece, declaring war on France and Britain, these are things he never would have done if it hadn't been for Adolf. And he wouldn't have even introduced the various racial laws. About a third of all Jews in Italy were members of the fascist party. When he did bring in various Jewish laws, up to two thirds of Italian Jews were protected because they were either members of the fascist party or they had a close relative who was a member of the fascist party. The only racial laws he actually tried to institute properly were those that were, were prevent, there to prevent Italians from marrying or mingling with Abyssinian women. So, on this day, 20th of October, the March on Rome gets to Rome. If you like these videos, comment, like, subscribe, and come back tomorrow for more.